أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم dear viewers welcome to jamil tv we have been studying the commentary of surah 110 annat meaning the victory we have already covered in the last episode the topic of its background and period of revelation as well as its theme and subject today in this episode we will try to know more about its subject matter and contents let us resume our study of the commentary of sura ban nasr it is said that it was an awaited event we will now consider the permanent import and instructions outlined in this short sura when allah's help and victory come and you see people embracing allah's religion in large numbers then extol your lord's limitless glory and praise him and seek his forgiveness he is the one who accepts repentance verses 1 to 3 refer the beginning of the first verse implicitly presents a concept of what goes on in this universe and the events that take place in this life it also covers the actual role of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers in the progress of islam and to what extent it depends on their efforts when allah's help and victory he notes that it is help granted by allah and it is he who brings about victory in his own good time in the form he decides and for the purpose he determines the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions have nothing to do with it at all and they obtain no personal gain from it it suffices for them that he does it through them appoints them as its gods and entrusts it to them This is all they acquire from Allah's help the victory and people's acceptance and mercy of his religion according to this concept the duty of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions whom Allah chose and gave the privilege of being the instruments of victory for his cause was to turn to him at the climax of victory in praise expressing gratitude and seeking forgiveness gratitude and praise are for his being so generous as to have chosen them to be the standard bearers of his religion for the mercy and for favor he did to all humanity by making his religion victorious and for the conquest of makkah and people's collective acceptance of islam his forgiveness is sought for any defective feeling privately entertained such as vanity which sometimes creep into one's heart when victory is attained after a long struggle it is almost impossible for human beings to prevent this happening and therefore god's forgiveness is to be sought forgiveness also has to be sought for what might have been insinuated within one's heart during the long and cruel struggle and for petulance resulting from a conceived delay of victory or the effects of convulsive despair as the quran mentions elsewhere do you reckon that you will entertain paradise while you have not suffered like those believers who passed away before you affliction and adversity befall them and so terribly shaken were they that the messenger and the believers with him would exclaim when will allah's help come surely allah's help is close at hand to verse to one four refer it is also necessary to seek allah's forgiveness for one's shortcomings in praising allah and thanking him for his infinite favors which were granted at all time if you were to count allah's favors never will you be able to number them 16 18 refer however great ones efforts in this respect are 
they are never adequate seeking forgiveness at a moment of triumph also arouses feelings of weakness and imperfection at a time when an attitude of pride and conceit seems natural all these factors guarantee that no tyranny will afflict the vanquished the victorious leader is made to realize that it is god who has appointed him a man who has no power of his own and who is devoid of any stands for a predetermined purpose consequently the triumph and the conquest as well as the religion are all his and to him all things ultimately return this is the lofty dignified ideal the quran exhorts people to toil towards and ideal in which man's exaltation is in neglecting his own pride and where his soul's freedom is in his subservience to allah the goal set is the total release of human souls from their egoistic shackles their only ambition being to attain allah's pleasure along with this release there must be exerted effort which helps man flourish in the world promotes human civilization and provides a rightly guided unblemished constructive just leadership devoted to allah by contrast man's effort to liberate himself while in the grip of egoism shackled by his zest for worldly things or overpowered by his cravings turned out to be absolutely useless unless he frees himself from personal desires and ambitions his loyalty to god must be made to override everything else particularly at the moment of triumph and the collection of booty such behavior which allah wants humanity to attain was the characteristic feature of all the prophet alaihi salam such was the case with the prophet joseph when all he wanted was achieved and his dream came true and he raised his parents to the highest place of honor and they fell down on their knees prostrating themselves before him he said father this is the real meaning of my dream of long ago my lord has made it come true he has been gracious to me releasing me from prison and bringing you all from the desert after satan had sown discord between me and my brothers my lord is gracious in whatever way he wishes he is all knowing truly wise 12 verse 100 refers then at that moment of climax joseph took himself away from the jubilations and embracing arm to turn towards his lord praising him with a pure sense of gratitude my lord you have given me power and imparted to me some understanding of the real meaning of statements originator of the heavens and the earth you are my guardian in this world and in the life to come let me die as one who has surrendered himself to you and admit me among the righteous chapter 12 verse 101 refer thus any sense of his own egotism and happiness brought about by his reunion with his family vanished and the picture we are left with is that of an individual joseph praying to allah to help him remain submissive to him and until he dies and to let him out of his mercy and grace join his righteous servant it was also with the prophet solomon when he saw the queen of sheba throne brought into his very reach when he saw it set in his presence he said this is of the bounty of my lord that he may try me whether i give thanks to remain ungrateful he also gives thanks does so for his own good and he who is ungrateful well my lord is all sufficient and bountiful chapter 27 verse 40 refers
and so indeed it was with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam throughout his life in the moment of triumph as the conquest of makkah was accomplished he entered the city on the back of his camel with his head bowed low he forgot the joy of victory and thankfully bowed his head seeking his lord's forgiveness even though he had just conquered makkah whose people had openly and unashamedly persecuted and expelled him this also was the practice of his companions after him thus upon belief in allah was that great generation of humanity raised very high reaching an unparalleled standard of greatness power and freedom